think we were recording, Paul. Hello, Carl. Hey, Hello, you? students. Hey. Oh, trying to get the phone. Now, overview of the class on uh, Tuesday night. In, in, initial um, thoughts. Well, I, as I said, everyone stepped up. I think there was a there was a really good intention behind everyone's work. And for those people who maybe didn't get the marks they wanted, I, there was improvement for everyone. We saw a couple of brilliant throwdowns. People really stepped up to that Tassie love. And, uh, you know, as we said on the night, for me, it was all about nailing the niche. Mm. Cold doll? Well, I think the interesting thing is that the there's a bit of, almost a double-edged sword there, isn't there? Some of the marks were a bit lower um, than some of the students might have been expecting, but I think each group got back really good feedback. Mm. And I think that the difference between where the average student performance was and where they could go to in the next workshop is just like flipping that coin straight back over. Um, so what I'm really hopeful for is that the students are taking on board the feedback they're getting and they're thinking, okay, we've been challenged mm. to see if we can knock this over in 90 seconds or, or thereabouts. Mm. Not falling into the trap of just coming along and going bang, 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 mm. but actually thinking about what actually is the crux of mm. each issue that we have to talk to. Mm. You know? It's simple. There's a simple list. And, you know, you just need to commit to what you're doing, commit to your sale and sell it to us. So, you know, I mean, as you probably are aware from my response, I'm not a massive fan of marking. I think marking people isn't how life is. However, life is about being able to be excellent in the moment. So when you get an opportunity, be able to nail it. And you can't nail it without really understanding the key elements. So in lots of ways, we rank you because that's how... That's how the university is. That's how we pass to you. So don't let the mark put you off, but think, as Colin said, about what the feedback was. We want you to be the best you can be. So just take that on board and we'll be so ready for Tassie Green. Well, I think one of the things to add there with the marking is you've got two forms of marking happening. You've got summative marking and formative marking. The summative marketing is the number. And it's, it's, a, it's a very discreet thing. It just happens and that's it. But the formative marketing is the feedback that you get given at the end of that uh, presentation. And that's the thing that will actually take you in the improvement. It's hard to get a number and think, okay, you can be motivated to improve because we only got given 50 or 60%. Mm -hmm. But the formative feedback, if you take that on board, that's the thing that actually helps you understand how you move from one workshop to the next to actually achieve the improvement. Mm -hmm. So. And if you have done well, there would have still been feedback about how you could have done mm. even better. I mean, the, the, I thought the classic one was um, with the um, with the the restaurant and the and the yeah. and but with, you know at going from couples to singles. So you know they, they were almost there and then it just fell off at the end. Mm. So it's like you know the thing to take out of that is okay, we're we're pretty close. Mm. We just need to make sure we hold our ground, hold our nerve, and and keep the focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Commit to your first idea. Yeah. Um, good work though, guys. Good work. Good work. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. The um, so we've got online. We've got the um, sales seeker uh, yes. plan, yes. and what we're, what we're looking for there is is for you to have that judgment, you know, your own judgment, not to sort of just simply say, well, I read the case and they said, you know, that their target market is this. Yeah. We don't um, want a summary. We want we want a criticism. We want you to critically analyze that information. We can see what's there. But well, ask yourself what isn't there. So in terms of the the elements that we always ask you to talk about, what haven't they said and what haven't they made clear? I, would you put your own money into it? So imagine every time you look at these things and you look at the pictures, imagine that you've got the money. You're being asked to put your salary, your house, your whatever into it. Would you do it? And if you wouldn't, why not? Mm -hmm. And I think one of the other challenges you've got is that we encourage you to sit down and have a chat amongst the, amongst yourselves in relation to trying to understand what's actually happening there because that's a good way of, of learning um, and, and actually trying to work your way through it. But what we want you to do is to post online something that's very individual. So, you know, uh, Polly and I might sit down and go through that case, um, but, you know, and one, we're going to write something. Maybe we write it together um, or maybe we write it individually. Uh, what you don't want to be doing is simply posting the same comments that someone has because if you do that, um, you're actually exposing yourself to the point where we look at it and we think, hmm, don't really know who didn't, who really didn't get it. 
Mm. You, know, it's, mm. you, you can't have both arrived at the same thing to post individually at the same time. So um, put your own work on there. It can be concise. It doesn't have to be long. But, but the main thing is it's your interpretation. What are they actually selling? What do you think they're actually selling? Maybe they claim they're selling this, but you really think they're selling that. Maybe mm. you think they're selling convenience. We're asking you to think. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, who are they selling it to? Maybe they say they're selling it to businesses, affiliates, and consumers. Maybe you think there's someone else in there mm. as well. Maybe you think they've missed a massive gap in the market. Yeah. Maybe you think they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. So tell us that. Yeah. Uh, and likewise, you know, have they said there's a compelling reason? Mm. I think I, I think I know what I think they are saying the compelling reason is, but maybe you think it goes the other way. I think the compelling reason that they're talking about in the plan without giving away too much is more directed from a business to business uh, perspective. Um, but I think there are some compelling reasons there for the consumers to want to be a part of this. The one tricky thing about this plan is that it is definitely born out of the American psyche. And the American psyche is a little bit more sales oriented and, and get excited by the notion of sales than we do in Australia where we just have sales but it's like, you know, it's, it's just mm. a going through the motions type thing. Yeah, I mean, well, I think that the critical thing that you guys need to start thinking about is who is the market? Think about the market and what their drivers are because mm. their drivers are ultimately what's going to get them to put their hand into their pocket and pay for something. So there has to be a compelling reason for them to, to make that move. That's what you need to think about. The market is everything. The, the sale is everything in terms of not just sales, but their transaction. Okay. I think we're, uh, I think, what, so I think now we need to actually get our uh, Tasmanian love hats on. We've got a couple of minutes. We haven't actually thought about it yet, but, but we, we did prepared. promise. We promised. Didn't now, we? we're, going, we're going behind the veil of my office and uh, we're, we're going to whip something up. We're going to whip gonna... something up and uh, I've just come up with an idea. Oh. I've just I'm turning this 